My name is Anna Pereira. I want to welcome everyone to the session. Um, Alex, welcome. Patrick, welcome. Uh, we're here to talk about Soccer X 2023, which is happening in less than a month, and also what the Wellness Universe will be bringing to Soccer X to help you achieve your goals for your company culture and wellness. Um, so first I want Patrick, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. You're the CEO of Soccer X, and it's been such a pleasure working with you and bringing this together with you as the wellness partner for Soccer X. So please, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Anna. Um, probably quite a lot to live up to after that intro, but, um, yeah, CEO of Soccer X for a couple of years now with the business for four, um, in its entirety, I'm. Uh, based in the uk so i live on the south coast of the uk originally from east london but as you know split my time between here and thankfully miami which um there are obviously worse places to um have to split your time um between the uk and there so i'm um, pretty blessed to do that and as you say we've, we've got an event in two and a half weeks um so it's literally around the corner which will be our fourth in in miami um and our 50th physical event in in 27 years so um milestones everywhere this uh, this november in miami that's fantastic and i'm i'm so honored to be part of this with you and patrick you're doing an amazing uh job of doing the event i i understand it's sold out people are wanting to get into the doors and basically cannot get in at this point so i want to thank you for taking this time and and allowing us to to do a three ticket giveaway to the event uh here today to a live uh, attendee uh, of our session here. So hang tight for one minute, Patrick, because I want to get to your story because it's so interesting, um, not only your professional background and your career, but also your personal story. So hang in there for one minute. Alex, I want to welcome you to our talk, and I'm so blessed to have you as our partner for our corporate wellness um, solution that we're going to be unveiling at SoccerX. And I want to say thank you so much. So do you want to take a few minutes and introduce yourself? Sure. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Bowden. I am the CEO and founder of a company called People First Talent and Retention Consulting. So we are, you know, HR, which doesn't sound very exciting, but what we really like to do, what we talk about doing is helping change the world one workplace at a time. And we do that through the lens of culture and creating great cultures where people can thrive and love what they do. Um, we're really passionate about it and well-being is a huge piece of that and often a piece that gets segregated or separated off. Um, just as culture often gets separated off from things like the bottom line and your operations and your productivity. And so we're really trying to change the narrative and um, bring it back into focus that people are at the center of everything and uh, all those things impact uh, how we do business. So happy to be here, happy to have this conversation and be a part of Soccer X, my first time, so I'm excited. And uh, we have a really cool panel we'll be uh, hosting that day. Yeah, awesome. And I wanna definitely talk about that panel a little later. Um, and again, my name is Anna Pereira. I'm the founder of the Wellness Universe and um it's just a real honor to be bringing wellness solutions through soccer x and i'll give a little bit more about my story and what makes me passionate about um why we're bringing it through soccer x uh a little later but patrick so patrick it's been such a it's been such an honor may i call you mac yeah please do everybody else uh, does, so. all right great so Mac, and I'm, I'm, I, we're, we're friends right that's how we speak to each other anyway so i yeah, I, th I think that we're friends i consider us friends <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so, I, I mean, it's been a real pleasure working with you and seeing how dedicated you are to Soccer X and seeing how you work from behind the scenes and how important it is for everything to be perfect and for all of what's going on to be perfect. And due to your, I think, really your long and dedicated career, both in commercial and having a love of soccer and also a real, uh, a real passion for wanting to give give back to kids and 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 through soccer i i love who you are and you know where you come from and everything that you're doing first can you share a little bit about what soccer x actually is and what can we expect if we come to this event yeah sure um as i mentioned we've been around for 27 years the business was started by uh, duncan and, and rita reevey uh, duncan was the son of a legendary England uh, manager and Leeds United manager of the 70s, um, 
Don Reavy, and effectively it was started as a way of, of kind of bridging a gap between the the people that work within football. How do we network? How do we bring people together to discuss, you know, hot topics, trends, um, issues? How do we troubleshoot in the game? How do we get people to lead uh, from a thought leadership perspective or from a lead by example perspective? How do we bring the people that are running the game together, you know, to share best practice ideas, to talk about new products, new ways of doing things. Um, and really it was about shaping the conversation, um, not necessarily initially by driving change, but the debate that brings about the change, if that makes sense. So, you know, when you bring the, the kind of powers that be that, that run the game from FIFA to the MLS to La Liga and bring them all in one place, um, it, great things do happen over a couple of days. And I think that one of the things that I always say to my commercial guys when speaking to clients is that, you know, if they want to work in football or, or soccer, as I even call it now, um, it would take a, a really long time to meet the kind of people that come to our event. Um, it would take a year, two years, three years, but you can do that all in a couple of days and good evenings, which we're, we're quite well known for as well. So um, that was always the idea was you know, bringing people together, together, networking and ensuring that business happens. Uh, and the ethos of, of um, the company was take care of the game and the business takes care of itself. And we've still carried that motto on now, really, you know, myself and, and the team are all football or, or soccer people, maybe bar one or two that are still very good professionals, but don't have the, the maybe same love of the game. And I think that when you truly care about anything, it does get that extra 10% out of you, right? And um, you strive for, even though some describe perfection as the en enemy of progress, I think, um, you can at least aim for it, right? And maybe fall a little bit short from time to time. But um, yeah, I think so. If, if you look at how it's evolved down the years and we've done digital events during COVID and, and actually they work pretty well for us um, in terms of bringing people together even easier because they didn't have to fly, you know, all around the world. Um, and I think that it's only a small factor that we always decide to host our, our events in wonderful cities like Miami that make sure people come along um, that, you know, people do get a lot out of our events. There's lots of business that happens, lots of conversations happen. And, you know, we've worked with every successful bidding city for any world cup since 1996, as an example. So from the top to the bottom, um, from, you know, FIFA governing bodies, leagues and federations down to, you know, semi-professional clubs or youth academies and working with kids, we, we try and encompass everything concerning the business side of the game from, finance to performance really i love that in-depth uh explanation of what soccer x is for those who have never been to soccer x um so it's and and to bring all these people together uh you do this through um uh first of all this is a global event i want to mention that the miami event is a global event while you host other events through the year in different cities on uh, different host cities um this is the global event so this is the event to go to if you go to any of them um, but I want to say that uh, it's through talks that that soccer that soccer X actually curates and creates these uh, of the moment most important type of topics uh, with the leaders in the industry. You curate these conversations from your stage, and then there are the partners that um, like the Wellness Universe who will have talk time on our stage. And so you have these amazing talks going on. You have these networking opportunities and network in the networking cafe um, and various places and spaces through the event. And then there are also vendors, correct? Yeah, so we'll see about 2,000 people, two to two and a half thousand people from, uh, if we take last year as an example, there were 70 countries represented in Miami, which is pretty incredible. Um, this year, there'll probably be more. Uh, if you look at the amount of exhibitors or partners that we have for this event, it's pretty much doubled in size from last year, which is which is pretty incredible. Um, and yeah, we've always got three main components. You know, you've got the content side where we cover everything that's relevant to the game, and you know, people like yourselves come in to to deliver talks on certain topics of importance in various sectors or various fields that are relevant to people that run football clubs or associations or, or governing bodies or leagues. Um, then we've got the expo component where you've got, you know, our exhibitors who have a product or service that's relevant to a football club and they want to do business with them or sell a product to them. Um, and then we've got the networking things like the cafe. We've got speed networking sessions. We've got activations with partners. We've even got a, a pitch so you can come and show your skills, Anna, as well, and take some penalties or something and um, really, really immerse yourself in that. So, um, 
And again, we've got, you know, a fantastic VIP networking reception, at a place called the Regatta on Coconut Grove, which is one of the most incredible venues um, we've certainly hired. Um, and an, a social evening went into Miami on the 14th. So it's a pretty hardcore couple of days. I'd say maybe bring some um, hangover cures and some soft shoes is probably the, um, the advice I'd maybe offer anybody that's not been before. I love that, Mac. That's so funny. So, um, so basically, Soccer X is your ground zero for the business and the industry of soccer. This is not like where like the local people go to get like their local uniforms and for the local community stuff. This yeah. is this is where business begins and sometimes even ends or flourishes there. This is the ground yeah. zero. Yeah, I mean. You'll see people at our event, um, and it, it was quite weird coming in as a few years ago, almost as a relative outsider. There are people that have been coming to our events for 20 years, 25 years, and they come to meet friends, their peers, their people that have done business together for decades. Um, and it's quite strange when you see that people reuniting from all over the world. We always say we reunite in the football industry every four, five, six months. Um, and that's what we do. We just bring everybody together and we know they're the right people um you know 70 to 80 percent of the people we have are, are c-suite executives so business does get done that's for sure um and it's yeah it's just a, a really enjoyable and exhausting couple of days where um like i said we welcome people from 70 countries and and uh what's interesting is that they're all responsible for different things so you'll meet somebody responsible for fan engagement you'll meet people responsible for hr or the well-being of, of people that work within the organizations or performance or sponsorship or whatever and i think for somebody interested in the business side of the game um you know you can you can lose yourself in the amount of conversations you'll have over a couple of days i love i love it mac now i i know that we've taken up a lot of the time talking about what soccer x is but i felt it was really important so everybody really gets an idea and understanding of how epic and instrumental and game-changing this one place with all of the all the players involved who meet up here and how life changing and transformational it can be. But I want really quickly to learn a little bit more about you in like two or three minutes, like two minutes, if you can just tell us about your story, because I know that your story, your personal story has really impacted the trajectory of your life. And if you want to share yeah. with us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think I grew up in the eighties in a rough part of East London to, uh, to Irish parents um at a particularly rough time for irish parents in london um, we will remember signs of no blacks no irish no dogs um so i actually have a t-shirt that says more blacks more irish more dogs which does offend some people uh, <laughs> but um yeah so it, it was a, a tough place it was an honest place there was a, a good community there but you know you had to look after yourself and you know i had a few incidents as a kid as you know where i was you know quite badly attacked and i was brutally stabbed and i had my face obliterated which is why i've got new teeth um because <laughs> my face was uh, was obliterated with a couple of titanium baseball bats when i was 13. um i was put into a medically induced coma for four weeks um operated on had metal plates put in here in my head rebuilt my jaw replaced my teeth um and then had headaches for 30 years since i suppose so as you know recently had extensive surgery to rebuild my jaw again and replace the plates which i've not long recovered from um via a trip to turkey to have the teeth fixed again <laughs> and um and, and then back again so i think um I'm not alone in, in a story like that i think there are maybe few of us that are ceos of of large organizations that have a similar story because i didn't have the kind of educational route into business mine was a I played football through that and played football till I was 20 um, and then didn't make it as a as a professional in the game. So I wasn't very good at anything else apart from being entrepreneurial because most of my family had their own businesses. So from a very young age, I would wash cars. I would work in my grandparents' cafe. I would work in my parents' pub. I would work anywhere for five pounds, 10 pounds. And um, that's why I say to my guys, it's impossible to outwork me um you can't really uh, and as you know i don't sleep much so um that's certainly part of that as well which helps me to cover various time zones um but yeah i think i had an ability to communicate and get on with different types of people which led me to a career in sales um and i rapidly grew or ran up the ladder if you like in the city of, of london in the media world of advertising and the commercial world of tv and publishing um i was the youngest uk sales manager at 24 the youngest uk sales director at 27 
running a sales floor of 100 crazy people, um, which was incredible for me as, a, as an opportunity. And um, I've always tried to lead from the front and look after the people that work for me. And um, as my grandparents would have said, treat the janitor the same way you treat the boss. Um, and don't you know step on anybody on the way up because you might need them on the way back down. And there's been enough you know peaks and troughs in in, in my life certainly as as there is for everybody else, um, which makes me thankful every day for waking up doing what I genuinely love to do. Um, and as I say to my children, you know if you do what you love to do, it doesn't make it perfect. It doesn't mean you're constantly happy, but it's a lot easier to get up on a cold dark monday morning in london and, and make it all happen again when you did it the week before um so yeah um I, I think um my story is one of sales really commercially um from a career perspective and, and running sales teams or training sales teams and taking over failing businesses and commercializing them and moving on that's not why i ended up at separate it's always done pretty well um doing pretty well now too so um yeah it's we've only just started we've had a, a crazy phoenix from the flames 18 months but uh, between myself and the team i've got a great team around me as you know really good people that are in it for very similar reasons to me um and we all come from similar backgrounds nobody born with silver spoons or anything like that they're all incredible um workaholics which means you can message most of them at 7 a.m or 10 p.m and you'll get a pretty swift response most Matt, of the time i, I love um, i love how your team supports um supports you and supports you know this 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 uh, this uh, event. I want to say that um, a few of the things really struck me. First of all, I know that you know what it was like to be bullied, so you know what it is to need support around you and to have those well-being um, and wellness uh, pillars and influences, mm -hmm. and also those tools to go to, um, and also the way that you are as a leader within your organization. You understand how company culture and the culture of your organization definitely impacts you know everything um uh and down to you know your the money you know down to where uh yeah. time energy and money is being spent so what i'd like to do is i'd like to now pass this over to alex and thank you mac so much for sharing all this with us alex i would love for you to tell us a little bit more about your story and and why you're passionate about you know representing and um, bring a strong empowered culture into an organization and how that all dovetails together. Sure. So when Anna told me I had to follow Mac, I told her I quit. I'm not showing up today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pretty incredible story for Mac. Thanks for sharing that. Um, mine, a little bit less, you know, extreme, but I, I have a background in dancing. I was a professional dancer before um, getting into business. Um, did it my whole life, you know, went to school for dance. I went to Ohio State as the number one program in the country at the time and got my degree in dance of all things, as well as, you know, 100,000 in loans. And that was not the smartest decision I ever made in my life. And uh, moved to New York, did the whole thing. I got hired in my first uh, audition for an off-Broadway theater and about a month into training um, for our first show, I was stuck at home in Hurricane Sandy and I got an email from the choreographer and right before the hurricane, the last interaction we'd had was the director had lined us all up and wanted to see how we looked as a group. And then essentially, you know, the choreographer had to email me and tell me that I was fired because I wasn't skinny enough. I didn't fit in with the rest of the, the women, which is not the first time I'd heard that. I'm probably built more like a soccer player than I am uh, a dancer. but. Um, that was a pretty common rhetoric growing up and, and never let it stop me, but that was definitely a blow after, you know, my whole family was super excited and everyone knew that I got my first gig. And, um, so after that, it was really just working 15, 16 hour days, four jobs to make it in New York and realizing, um, this isn't going to sustain me. And this is not the life I want to live. I don't have time to dance and that's when I moved here. So now what do I do? So what led me into HR was really what I call my quarter life crisis and being 25 and realizing, you know, I couldn't go back to school because I already had so much debt. I couldn't afford it. Um, and I didn't know who would hire me with a dance background. You know, I didn't have any easy parallels into anything else. Um, the only thing I had done a lot of was I nannied, you know, many years, watched kids since I was 10 i'd had all kinds of other jobs and odd jobs um, i'd worked in nonprofits. um i had worked a lot with uh, dance therapy for 
children and adults with special needs. That was a huge passion of mine, but none of those really correlated into um, a new career. So when I got a call one day, I'd moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, I got a call from a recruiter. She thought I'd be a good fit for this marketing company because I'd done some social media. I'd done, you know, dabbled in different things. I'd been an executive assistant before, um, and I'd worked with hiring people through nonprofits to go into inner city schools and run dance programs. So she, you know, put me up for this job. I got the job. I was paid more money um, than I'd ever made in my life, which was not a lot. I was paid $36,000 and I in benefits and I was like crying. I was so excited uh, because I was making $27,000 living in New York City. Um, and it really changed my life. And about a month in, they approached me and they're like, oh, you you've have experience, you know, interviewing and hiring people. We have a recruiting committee. Do you want to be the co-chair? And I was like, well, I'm not at all qualified for that, but okay, sure, you know, let's do it. Um, and after a couple months, I just really had a knack for it. And within that year, they promoted me into um, hiring full time and HR full time. And I really built my career from there um, at that company. And then after having my first son, um, I decided that I wanted to start my own business with what I had learned I was also passionate about. And I didn't think I'd find anything I was passionate about again after dancing. It had been my whole life. Um, but I realized I was really passionate about people and creating environments where everyone can thrive and be able to connect people to opportunities where they can feel like they can use their you know, God-given talents um, and be the best version of themselves. And that doesn't have to be one thing. It can be multiple things and multiple careers. Um, and so having a unique background coming into a corporate environment and realizing that many other people in that environment came from non-traditional backgrounds, some of the top performers did not come from, you know, the traditional resume that they were looking for, having to change the minds and perspectives, sorry, perception perspectives of the whole leadership team of what that needs to look like to have a top performer. Um, seeing that change, that whole corporate culture change and being in an environment where I felt like I was taken care of. Um, and it was, you know, an amazing feeling. I was like, why isn't everyone doing this? Right. So we're missing such an opportunity. So when I found my business, I did, you know, career coaching and helping people make that jump into something new. Um, but I also really focused on helping businesses develop environments where people can thrive, hiring people that really can bring a skill set into an organization that doesn't necessarily have to match on paper uh, what those expectations are and creating an environment where they're supported um, and they can enjoy what they do. And when that happens, people are really, really powerful and what they bring can be, um, you know, world changing. So that's why I connect back to culture and how I kind of found my way falling backwards into HR and, and what I do today. I love it, Alex. Thanks for sharing that. And what I'm hearing is basically, you know, I, I feel that um, those of us who have really like climbed out of a hole of some sort, we really um, understand and are very rooted in what it takes to be successful, not only for us and what we need to implement and what we need to do, but we really have um, an awareness of the people around us and how essential it is to have a strong team around us and the people who are part of it. I love um, uh, Max, a uh, uh, little, uh, little thing before when you said, you know, you treat your boss the same way you treat the janitor because you don't know, you know, if you're climbing up who you're going to have to, you know, step on when you're climbing, when you're coming back down, you know, and you want to make be friends with everybody. I actually really love um, working with you both uh, because I see that we are all very passionate and very driven to, um, and we are also very, um, you know, we're, we're, we're very uh, appreciative and grateful for the people that we work with. And we're blessed to have that. Not every organization has that. And there is the divisions between um, the divisions within organizations or the sector, sec se sectors within organizations. And this is why I'm really passionate about what, what we're doing, Alex, and what we're bringing to Sock Rex. And I'm so grateful, Amak, that you see how, um, instrumental it is to bring a solution where culture, company culture and wellness coming together. It's almost like I'm going to date myself now, folks, the winter twin powers, 
if you watch Hanna Barbera back in the day, coming together, <laughs> and it's like power the uh, Wonder Twin Power Activate, and between the company culture and wellness coming together, it's really creating that holistic solution. And I, for one, myself, have seen from being one of the owners in Bordeaux FC, which was at the time a 138 year old club, uh, we made it to to um, position number four on the table. They've oh, they've been champions and you know winners you know throughout their career and in the first division you know um, and but I saw a different side of it. I saw the areas that were broken. I saw the bullying. I saw a child from the academy go into the hospital. I saw the women for who were invited, our women's team, go to the UN and speak at, Nash, at the Women's Week about the um, discrepancy between the pay and, you know, in, in, in women's sport versus men's sport. And I saw them outside of the UN saying, you know, we're cheering them on. We were like, oh, great job, ladies. You know, wonderful, you know, wonderful representation. Um, for the sport, for our team, uh, we were the only team invited there. There was other dignitary speakers on the panel. And I was asking them, you know, like basically, um, you know, how do you feel? Like, how is it to be, you know, a woman player? And this was back in 2019 before like the bigger things started happening, like the World Cup and USA winning. And then I kind of kind of looked like that was kind of like the tipping point. Um, when, when that happened and I was like, how do you feel? You know? And they're like, Oh, we just go to work. We play the game. I'm like, my jaw just dropped. I had to pick up my jaw off the ground. And I was just like, no, I'm like, you are all icons. You're all influencers. Every man, woman, and child, boy and girl look to you as a superhero. You need to embrace that. And you need to walk with that and know how important you are and everything that you do, how it, how it affects every, everyone in the world. And now, and, and, and Mac, as we were discussing this before, I was, I'm so proud to see like little boys wearing women's jerseys like that part of the game i'm not here to specifically talk about women women's soccer but it is it's up and coming and really an amazing um piece of the soccer um you know big picture that it's wonderful to see it being raised up now finally but i was saying at that time you know there's so much more that you're influencing so now to even see young boys wearing women's jerseys but what i'm saying with this personal story of mine is i've seen for a woman be playing on a on a league one team and not feel that they're special not feel that they have influence not feel that they have power to me was mind-boggling so i know that behind the scenes that there's there's help that they need sure we give what we need to soccer teams and to sports teams for the um for the physical side and i've seen that there's not much being done for the wellness and the well-being side and i think that you would agree mac and alex you're being introduced to this new industry for yourself that there are there are certainly gaps that need shoring up and this is why i'm so passionate to be representing wellness and be representing company culture at soccer x uh, Mac, what do you have to say to that? Yeah, I think it's it's really interesting actually because the um, and it's not just in sport, but in, in any culture where there's a desire to win, whether that's on the field, whether that's commercially with your bottom line, you know, a, a lot of the the wellness or the well being of the people around that kind of gets forgotten about. Um, you know, coming first or making hitting target or whatever it might be is is the number one and sometimes the only thing people care about um and actually there are really long-term ramifications for ignoring the well-being of the people that are on that journey so you know one of the things that we do consciously and subconsciously is, is provide a really flexible environment for for my team that enables them to spend time with their children it enables them to time to go away as i said to them last week we're at the really overwhelming stage of our event where sometimes, you know, after working a 15, 16 hour day, you can feel like the whole world's falling on you. So if they need a day to actually step back and breathe and make sure that they've got the ability, not just to deliver their jobs, but to still be well for themselves and for their family and their loved one and their kids, it's imperative that we do that. And I think a lot of the time, football is probably one of the most guilty sports 
of ignoring you know wellness of not just people on the field but people forget about the people in the back office they've got to sell tickets they've got to sell jerseys they've got to generate sponsorship revenue they've got to build the new stadium the targets get bigger and bigger the higher up the chain you go right um and it's really really easy to to just think everybody's okay because they're doing a good job um you know i've I've done a good job most of my career but i've also battled with you know depression and weight and painkiller issues through my operations and things like that and sometimes you forget about that when you think wow i've still got to make target i've still got to sell this partnership i've still got to build this event or whatever um and football now thankfully um we're seeing a lot more people being a bit more outspoken um about mental health in particular um it's a lot it's very easy to focus on the physical performance of an athlete um and it's also very easy to measure the success or not of that but it's very difficult to 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 you know successfully measure the the mental problems that people might be going through or or the 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 pressure getting to people, whatever it might be, um, you know. So I think it's really important to make sure that you communicate with people as open and as often as possible, um, and to make sure that you've got a, a door open policy where your staff feel they can trust you to talk about anything. And, and I think that most of the guys that work for me, and I say guys, there are male and female, um, obviously. And as you know, my missus works for us as well in, in the design department. We're a, a real family entity, um, and I think that most if not all would say that they could call me at any time um weekend morning evening and say hey i've got a problem with the kids or hey you know i'm really under it and you know i've had those conversations recently with, with staff members and and fundamentally uh, as joe our owner teaches me sometimes you can't solve every problem that lands on your desk right and, and sometimes you just have to say hey i can't deal with that today um and i think it's that acceptance of saying you know things will always get done um, and as long as you've got your health, then everything else is a bonus. And sometimes we look at it the other way around, which I think is incorrect, because if you've got an un- unbalanced workforce, you might enjoy some short term success, but the long term pain is going to outweigh that pretty heavily, I think. Those are real nuggets. Those are real nuggets of wisdom you just shared with Smack and thank you. And uh, I want to say thank you for being brave enough to share actually your personal struggles that you've overcome and, you know, um, maybe even go through from time to time. But, you know, as we all try to evolve forward, I think um, us being more aware, more open and, and saying, hey, I'm having this struggle, which we've seen now thank god you know that that there are icons out there that have come to the forefront and said i need help i need to take a break so um with that alex i know that we're running over time so alex i just want to hear your final thoughts also on why you feel it's so important how the way we've joined forces to bring culture solutions along with the wellness and not just being a one-off um you know uh you know tick the box for the wellness piece or just culture and how and why what we're doing makes it different and makes the solution a winning solution for an organization. And while you're doing that, by the way, um, everyone who's with us here, you know that we're giving away free tickets to Soccer X. I'm going to be um, pulling the winners in the back end. So if it looks like I'm distracted, I am. I'm going to be pulling some winners. <laughs> Take it away, Alex. Yeah, so I I think, you know, the common miss when it comes to um, wellness, right, how we qualify as wellness solutions is that it's not holistic, that, like I said, we separate it from culture almost entirely. Um, And about 80% of companies in the U.S. have some sort of wellness solution strategy, um, which is quite a lot, right? But very few of them actually are seeing much return on investment. And the return on investment capability is pretty significant when it comes to doing wellness well. Um, and the reason why a lot of those fail is because they are you know, either blanketly placed on top of an organization without actually understanding what their people need, or maybe it's you know, one small facet of, hey, we're gonna offer you know, mental health through our benefits, which is wonderful. That's a great offering, but that doesn't address, you know, everything and not everyone will take advantage of that benefit. So really being able to look at it from um, the culture of the organization as a whole, because the whole is made up of individual people, right? So if individual people are not well, 
then it's going to impact your culture and your organization. And then if your culture is not well, it's going to impact those people and their wellness and well-being because we spend most of our time at work. I mean, Max talking about 15, 16 hour days, right? That's the majority of the time that you're awake. And so if you're in a toxic culture and a culture where you don't feel seen or heard or valued, um, that can have a very serious impact on your, your well-being, your home life, uh, everything, every facet of, of who you are. So it becomes a very complex and entwined problem to solve. And I think that's why people kind of throw little solutions at it because it feels overwhelming to tackle. Um, but what we do is we really look at it from three lenses that we think is most important and break it down from there. And the way we do that is we look at it from um, the executive level or leadership levels idea of how their organization is doing, right? So we benchmark, how do I think my company is doing? How do I think my people are doing in terms of engagement? And then we benchmark the people within the organization's viewpoint. So a little bit more objective or from a different angle of how they think the organization's well-being is doing, um, how the leadership is engaging with them, you know, how safe they feel, psychological safety in terms of sharing problems or challenges, um, giving feedback. And then we also take a look at evaluating the individual well-being. And so we're bringing all three of those angles into the overall structure and strategy of how do we tackle um, the well-being of the organization as a whole and all the individuals within it. And I think that's, you know, the best way that we have at this point to really make sure that we're solving the problem holistically and not just taking it um, one angle at a time. Now, we do have to break it down in bite-sized pieces, right? You can't change everything at once, but there should be a plan behind it. And many times we have a strategic plan, we have a financial plan, we have a marketing plan, we don't have a people and culture plan. Um, we've done a survey of over 250 CEOs and actually less than 10% have a people and culture plan. So as much as we realize they impact the bottom line, we're doing very little to strategically plan around it. So that's what we're trying to tackle with um, changing the way we work for the better. Thank you, Alex. And thank you, Mac. I want to thank you for your contributions for this to this conversation today. I want to let everyone know that I put in the Soccer X website's link and also our, what we're actually bringing to SoccerX, it's also on um, that second link. And then the Corporate Wellness Solution, uh, thank you, Sharon, and the Corporate Wellness Solution, more on that on the third link. Oh, and by the way, um, Alex, you have about two seconds to speak about the panel conversation and the conversation we're bringing with these two amazing women who are gonna be part of it. Yes, so our panel is on um, Tuesday, the second uh, day of Soccer X, and it's about transforming mindset through a culture rehab and then the hidden costs of a broken culture. So we're going to talk about, you know, the, the actual data behind the impact um, of people in the bottom line, because as Mac mentioned, right, many times we're driving performance, we're driving results, and we leave out the fact that we need people to make those results. And if they're not operating at their full potential, that's going to impact um, your productivity and your bottom line. So we have amazing speakers. We have um, Lisa Bontasumi. She is the CEO and founder of AF Mindset, and she is a um, social worker and uh, she has a psychology background, so she talks about the psychology behind sports um, and the impact of mental health and well-being in their ability to perform. And then we have Danita Johnson, the president of uh, DC United, and so she's going to be sharing her experience of you know the impact of leadership and changing the culture of DC United through the experience of COVID hitting right when she came in and having to really champion um, people through such a challenging time and still produce results. So it's going to be a really interesting conversation. I'm excited to hear what they have to say um, and excited to really just give them a platform for other people to hear their experiences on um, why people matter in this equation of performance. I love that, Alex. Thank you. And if anyone has any questions, just please put it in the chat. I'm so sorry that we didn't have um, a lot of time left and we actually went over time. But I also want to share with you who the winners are of your Ticket to Soccer X. I want to let you know this is a Ticket to Soccer X, a $650 value, something around that. Um, no accommodations or travels included with that. That's just a ticket, but we get to see you there in person. So if everyone's ready, I have the names. Da, da, da. So congratulations, Jesus. Marlene and Sueda. Uh, so I will be 
emailing you. Congratulations. I will be emailing you after the event. And so I will connect you to get those tickets. You're welcome. And um, there are some tickets still available. Um, so Mac, uh, they can go and get their tickets right on SoccerX.com, correct? They can, yeah. We're, we're issuing NFT tickets this year through Sports Illustrated. Um, so slightly different. Um, but yeah, we've got a few available. Um, it will be standing room only, I would have thought. But yeah, I think we, we've got maybe 40 or 50 left, I think. Oh, awesome. And and just so you know, if you do already have a, a Soccer X ticket and you just won one, it is transferable. So you'll be able to bring your friend now. So thank you so much. Mac, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're a super busy no, CEO. This has been amazing. Um, I love bringing a little bit more of the Soccer X conversation to the world and especially your conversation too. You've become a really dear friend to me through this process and um, sharing who you are and what you're passionate about really means a lot to me. Alex, I can't I can't be more blessed than to have an amazing partner with you taking this journey with me. Uh, I didn't really get to share too much about myself and my, my passions, but really creating that holistic solution like we talk about because it doesn't help if you're giving someone, you know, a mindfulness uh, uh, class or if you're doing something, you know, in culture here, but you're not bridging those gaps and you're not having buy-in from the top down and from the bottom up because then everyone's still having their individual conversation and having this bridge is really, I think, um, it, it's kind of what I have always envisioned as the the winning elixir and the winning mix uh, and gives some, gives an organization a real strategy uh, and for them to get behind and for their people to get behind and invest in so they have the success and long-term success. And I'm when I'm when I'm talking success, I'm talking, you know, not just success in their personal, you know, hardline items, the, you know, the financial success, the growth success, but literally having an amazing organization that people love to come to work when they have to let leave or exit they are in tears they don't want to leave your organization you know and everybody's input brings about more change more growth more um, health and vitality within the organization and through the structure